Hi everybody and thanks for watching my YouTube channel. My name's Kelly and today I'm going to show you how to make this citrus blossom lemon cake. Mother's Day is around the corner and I thought it'd be a great idea to make something so spring-like. It comes from the Nordic Ware loaf pan. So this is called the citrus blossom loaf pan. And what's interesting about it is it's got kind of three-dimensional uh, or two-dimensional lemons here and a lemon cut up and some blossom designs all around. So what I did is I got, instead of canning lemons, I sliced lemons and I cooked them in honey so it's a little healthier. And here I did some lemon strips and I put some mint leaves around and then this centerpiece is made from a fresh mango that I cut up and shaped it to look like a rose and then I put some berries around raspberries and strawberries and then I also put some strawberries around the pan the plate but you could also do blueberries which would look interesting or more raspberries so let me show you how to make this and we'll get started now so the first thing we want to do is butter and flour our decorative pan. And actually what I'm going to be using is coconut oil instead of butter. And I do recommend using, I'll share with you all the um, different brands I'll be using. Because I do recommend using the highest quality. So I'm going to put a tablespoon. It can be a little under. You don't need quite that much. And then I have a brush that I'm going to brush it with. And we want to get everywhere. Oh, you can use the pan spray, but I kind of like to do this because you really need the pan spray kind of builds up uh, the flour and it doesn't look as good. And also you don't really need another product when you can do this and this you're guaranteed to get in every nook and cranny. And I'll show you my technique for adding the flour so it doesn't leave a clumpy design. So the next thing we want to do is add about a full teaspoon of flour and I have it in this little sifter because I want it to come out really slowly. You want to get the sides and down into those areas where the blossom flower design is. So that's probably enough. So you can see I really only used about a quarter teaspoon of the flour. So what I like to do now is put this in the freezer so this will get hard and then when we pour the batter in it'll be ready to go okay let's get started with the cake so the first thing I like to do is turn on my oven and absolutely we have to make sure nothing is in there so we're setting preheating the oven at 325 degrees and I'm going to start with my ingredients and I'll be doing it in this mixer so you can see things nicely I'll just do the eggs here and then we'll finish up in the mixer. So I'm going to use three eggs. I like to start with the wet ingredients. And since I'm using coconut oil, it's kind of a less step because you don't need to uh, mix the butter with the sugar, cream it. Okay, so we've got three eggs. And then I'll just put the sugar in now. I already did measure it out. It's a cup. And um, we're going to be adding a honey glaze over the top. So I did put a little less sugar. And I want to share with you, I am using very best cane sugar organic. It's from Natural Grocers. We're here in Denver. So I love that product. Okay, so let me get this started on the KitchenAid. This beautiful spring cake has lots of lemon in it, the juice of three lemons, and also the zest of two lemons. So we have to zest our lemons, and you want to get just the yellow part. You don't want the white part. So just run it by one time. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got our eggs in, our sugar. We've zested our lemon. We can get that in there now. The zest of two lemons. And let's get this started on low. And also I wanted to mention I am using the very best eggs. These are local from Montrose, Colorado, City Farm. They're organic, pasture-raised egg. It always makes the cake taste better when you use the best ingredients. Okay, instead of a stick of butter, I'm putting in a half a cup of coconut oil. Put that in slowly. I can get that a little higher. And now I can add my quarter cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. It's about um, three lemons. The juice of three lemons. I'm going to turn that off while I put this in because I need to get the seeds, strain it to get the seeds out. And I'll get that going. Oops, let me lift it up. And why that's going, guys, I'm going to put in a half a cup of milk. And look at this milk. It's from a farm here in Colorado. We use raw milk. So you can't get this in the store. You have to get it delivered. But I do recommend it. It's delicious. So I'll put in a three quarters of a cup. We've got that measured out. The thing with raw milk, you have to shake it a lot because it has such qual. It's so quality. It has a lot of fat in it. Okay. So let's get this closer. Now we'll get the milk in. Okay, so I'll put my salt in now, which is one teaspoon. I'm using the pink Himalayan salt, this brand. I really like it. Okay, so the only thing left, this is the eight ingredients to this delicious cake. The only thing left is to put in our flour and our baking powder and we're done. So the bakey, the flour that I like to use is King Arthur's Organic and since usually I have it in a big uh, plastic container, but because I'm doing it straight out of the bag, this is a new bag that I had to open, I had want to fluff it up a little bit because it has been sitting in the store for a while. I'm going to turn this off. Bring this down. We're going to put in two cups of flour. So one. Whoa. Now I know why I keep it in a bin. So it kind of gets kind of messy here. Okay. Let me just clean this up a sec before we get continue. Okay, we can bring this up and get it going. And now the last thing we have to add is a teaspoon of baking powder and I'm using Bob's Red Mill. Now because we live in Colorado, we're a mile high from sea level. So I like to put in a little more. I'm gonna put a this is a half a tablespoon. So we've got all our eight ingredients. We've got the zest, the eggs, the sugar, the coconut oil, the milk, the salt, the all-purpose unbleached flour, and our baking powder. So let's get this going a little higher. And that's it. 
Now we're going to take this down and get it in our pan. So I've got the pan, the buttered and floured pan out of the freezer and you can see it's nice and hard so when we put the batter in and then bake it, we didn't disturb our, um, our coconut oil and our flour. So let me get this off. Now this thing's quite heavy, this bowl. So I'll mix a little more by hand. Looks very well mixed. Okay, now I'll get this in. So this will bake at 325. I would check on it after 50 minutes. It depends on your oven. It may need 60. It may need... 70 minutes. It just depends on your oven. Let me get the last bit out. We want to smooth this. Okay, we've got the batter in our low pan and we want to tap it at least uh, six to ten times get all the air bubbles out and then because of the decorative design on the bottom I like to put it on a little tray and we're gonna pop it in the oven so we just popped our cake in a 325 degrees preheated oven and we're gonna bake it for about 40 minutes or longer. We're gonna check on it in 40 and it may need 10 more minutes or so. It depends on where you live in the country and your oven. But meanwhile, we can make this beautiful, um, delicious rose made from a fresh mango and then we will also have some candied lemon slices we'll be decorating but however I do use honey instead of sugar and we will also use some fresh strawberries and fresh uh, raspberries so these all how to make this rose and the candied lemons are in another video um, that I posted so hope you look at that too but once this cake is done we'll get it out and decorate it and put everything together it's been 60 minutes since we put the cake in I did check it at 40 and at 50 minutes and it still needed more cooking but I think it should be done by now oh wow that looks good Let's just test it to make sure. Okay, that's nice. Okay, I let so it cool a full 40 minutes. So let's unveil it and see how it looks. Can we move that? Let's hope all our butter and flour worked. Uh-oh. Yay! It came out. Okay, I'm going to plate this, but I think the first thing to do is trim the bottom so it will uh, sit on the plate properly. So I'm just going to cut this off. Kind of do it as straight as I can. Let's see if that did it. Okay, that did it. And then I have a plate here. I can plate it with. Real careful. You can eat that later. That looks good. Nice and crispy. I can remove this. So here's some of the lemons that we candied in the honey and this is leftover honey and what I'm going to do is brush it all over first I'll try to brush off any flour there isn't really too much flour at all so we really need this to give it that shiny look you can also use a simple syrup 
So I just added some wax paper under part of it and I'll be able to pull it off easily because the honey started getting on the platter and that will be too hard to get off. So now we're just going to get the honey in every area. You can spin it around to see the other side. It's looking really good. This is the cutest loaf pan design, especially for spring. Okay, I think we can start adding the berries and the citrus and the mango. So um, one of the things we need to do, I should, probably should have done it before, was to trim this down where the mango is going to sit. Let me remove that. First, we'll get our mango design. I'll put a little honey as glue. I may put some on the back of this. Let's see, and now I can take out the toothpicks. It was sitting on that plate with berries, so it got a little red. Okay, and now let's do our citrus design. So we can put one here. Can you see? Got one here. We can put one over here. And I can cut one of these in half and put it over there. Give me a second. Here we go. I'm going to cut up one of the strawberries in half this way. And I can put some here. And just put it wherever you think. It will look good. We can add some of these raspberries. And then on this whole lemon design, we can put some lemon strips. These I probably need to soften up a little bit. Oh, that one's going nicely. So I candied these the same. I just cut them in strips instead of slices. And they bend quite nicely. So we've got that. I think we can add some more strawberries. And if we cut the stem like that and then cut it in half, it'll look like a heart. Can put that over here. And let me see, maybe I'll cut this one in half because I'm running out of room here. Can put that one here. And over here and also you can do some designs with the mango I cut the mangoes in strips can put a couple over here and then we just have to add the mint leaves so I've got some mint here need to open it up a little bit we can put it this I could probably trim down So it looks like a leaf. And then I do have some more mint here. I've washed all this already. Here's a nice one. We can put this right in here. And let's see, I think a couple more and we're done.
So let's see, guys. What do you think? How's it looking? I can put it more in front of the camera before we start putting the honey on it. So it seems like this would be the top. So I'll put a little more honey over the berries to give them that shine and over the raspberries to give it the shine. Oops, that one's coming out. Sticking to my brush. So maybe you have to hold it down with a toothpick while you're adding the honey. And then over the top of the mango. And we can just kind of drizzle it on the mint leaves so they don't pop up. Just try to get as much as you can. We've already done the lemon, so we're good there. And that's it, guys. We can now remove this. And it's a good thing we put it, because look at all the honey that dripped. It's no longer there. And we could just, if you want, Put these all around and serve it up for Mother's Day or you know we could put a different berry maybe blueberries would look great so that's it guys